Blackfriars is not only a mightily useful station, but it's also a mightily unusual one. It stands astride the river. You can enter it from both the north and south banks of the Thames, which makes it ideal for both the city and the attractions of the south bank. It's the only station in London that is on both sides of the river. It's always had a bit of that going on, being on both sides of the river, I mean. The main line here was built by a company called the London, Chatham and Dover Railway, whose coat of arms is still very visible on the South Bank. The London, Chatham and Dover wanted to get into the city, as most 19th century railway companies around London did. But doing so was quite an investment. There was a lot of money to be made if you could actually do it, but the price of land made getting there pretty costly. And the London, Chatham and Dover Railway were not a railway that had a lot of blunt. Furthermore, the Corporation of London had some reservations about the bridge they wanted to build, holding things up further. So their plan was, for the time being, to build a station slightly south of the river that would be called Blackfriars Bridge. In other words, we don't go to the city, but we're right next to a bridge into the city, please use our trains. Blackfriars Bridge Station opened in June 1864, but they got pipped to the post. You see, just down the road, more or less opposite where Southwark Underground Station is now, the South Eastern Railway had opened their own Blackfriars Station in January, having taken over a smaller company called the Charing Cross Railway. This was a bit of a swizz, as it was something of a hike from Blackfriars itself, and not even on the correct side of the river. These days, to avoid confusion, it tends to be called Blackfriars Road. You need to know a little bit about the situation with the London, Chatham and Dover Railway and the South Eastern Railway. Put simply, they hated each other. If you've ever wondered why railway lines in the south-east of England are such a mess, it's because these two companies were constantly trying to outdo each other. The general manager of the London, Chatham and Dover was Charles Statz Forbes, and that of the south-eastern was Edward Watkin. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, those names might sound very familiar. The two of them would go on to royally screw up the construction of the Circle Line thanks to their rivalry, and I've done a video on that which I'll link in the description below. It seems likely that the South Eastern built their own Blackfriars station in the hope of preemptively poaching passengers from the London, Chatham and Dover. If that was their plan, it didn't exactly work out. Passenger numbers were very low and the station closed five years later. Waterloo East would replace it. You can still see the old station entrance on the approach to Blackfriars Bridge. If you look closely, you can see wartime damage to the facade. Incidentally, in a moment of supreme irony, the situation between the two companies would be resolved in 1899. Their fighting over territory and resulting terrible service had near bankrupted both of them, and so they amalgamated into the South Eastern and Chatham Railway. So, that's that out of the way. What of Blackfriars Bridge? Well, it was a double-decker affair, with passengers using the upper level and goods using the lower. This ramp here enabled people to drive their carriages up to meet the trains, and at the time of filming it's possible to see the remains of another on the other side. The company would soon get their city terminus, opening a station called Ludgate Hill in December 1864, along with a bridge over the river, both designed by Joseph Cubitt. In fact, construction was so hurried that the station roof collapsed before opening, and they had to open another temporary terminus to get things going while repairs were carried out. Finally, they opened properly in 1865. So somehow I've got this far and not actually talked about the current Blackfriars station. The underground station was opened in 1870 by the Metropolitan District Railway, which you would know today as the District Line. No faffing about, this one was called Blackfriars and was in Blackfriars. Meanwhile, the London, Chatham and Dover were extending through the city and built a link to the Metropolitan Railway in 1874. 
The Metropolitan connected to several other railways, meaning that it was possible for those companies to run trains right through London to Chatham and Dover. It was a handy link across the Thames, a, a Thames link, if you will. To cope with the extra traffic, they built a second bridge alongside the first. Ludgate Hill was having trouble dealing with the crowds, so in 1886 the London Chatham and Dover opened a new station by the river. This one connected with the District Railway's Blackfriars station and was accordingly named St Paul's. Yeah, I know. Anyway, having so many stations so close together, the company decided that they didn't need Blackfriars Bridge and it was closed to passengers in 1885. The station was retained as a goods station until 1964. In 1898, the Waterloo and City Railway opened, running almost directly beneath the station. Every so often someone will suggest giving that line a station here, but the general consensus from transport folk is that it wouldn't be worth the expense. In 1937, the Southern Railway, who had taken possession of the line in 1923, renamed St Paul's to Blackfriars, because by now there was another St Paul's on the Central Line, and why on earth would you have two connected stations with two different names? That would be ridiculous. Anyway... The station footled along for a bit, that's the technical term we railway historian types use, until the 1960s when it became apparent that the station could do with work. You see, the original was not particularly well built, it was small and cramped. What was more, the poor old bridge across the river, the 1864 original, was falling apart. It was close to trains in 1971, and the process of rebuilding the station began. One unexpected problem they ran into was that the ground was frozen. The station building sat on top of an underground cold store. Rebuilding works were completed in 1977, but part of the old building has been preserved in the booking hall. It gives you a good idea of the London, Chatham and Dover's ambitions for their line. The new building really wasn't much to look at, as was the style in architecture at the time. In 1981, the original bridge was demolished, leaving only these pillars, this coat of arms, and another similar coat of arms preserved at Forley Hill, but that's a private site, so I couldn't film that, sorry. It's kind of depressing to note that the bridge that was insufficient in the 1870s was redundant by the 1970s. In 1990, Thameslink was completed. This was a plan to build a new link across London, largely using existing underused railway lines. It was an instant success, with passenger numbers quadrupling after the first year, so much so that British Rail looked into ways they could improve capacity on the line. The Thameslink programme, despite many hold-ups, was approved in 2007, and Blackfriars was in their sights. The old station which had of course been the new station 30 years previously, would be knocked down and replaced with a lighter, area structure that opened in 2012. The platforms were expanded across the river to enable 12 coach trains to use the station and to give access to Bankside. The station would need widening, but fortunately some joker had left a bunch of piers in the river to take the weight. It carries 4,400 photovoltaic panels on its roof and is the largest solar bridge in the world. I didn't even know solar bridges were a thing, but apparently they are. So that's Blackfriars, a station with a confusing history but a promising future. From here it's possible to get to such diverse destinations as Cambridge, Brighton, Gatwick, Bedford, Greenwich and France change at St Pancras. All in all, it looks like the old London, Chatham and Dover made a pretty good investment. Hello all. Thanks for watching this transpontine episode of Tales from the Tube. If you liked it, the like button is right there. And I believe the subscribe button is very close too if you like this sort of thing. Are you a regular user of Blackfriars? Personally, I love it for the view from the platforms, but I'd be interested to know your opinions. Let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll see you soon for another tale from the Tube.